Welcome back to The Great Experience by John Bat 426 here on YouTube. So glad you guys have been watching these videos. So glad the channel is growing. If you like the videos that you've seen thus far, hit the like button. If not, hit the dislike button. Share these videos with other people that you know that like comic book related materials. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications all. So the next time a new video is dropped, you'll know about it second and I'll know about it first. We'll have traffic coming in and traffic going out. One breath. Oh yeah, I'm the one breath champ. Wait, I'm not sure how that sounds. But... Anyway, we're gonna look at some DC news because DC has been all the rage these days. And this is coming from a tweet or a series of tweets. No, one long tweet from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And before I read the tweet, he is salty! Because his showboating, his puffery, another great word here for the great experience by John Bat 426 acting like he's going to come in and boss DC around, when DC said, we'll go with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and we'll see how your movie does. And the movie underperformed! Black Adam underperformed. Am I glad that it underperformed? No, because I like the movie. It was action-packed. Uh, it felt like it was made like an era ago because Cyclone and Adam Smasher, who were the new kids on the block of the Justice Society, were interacting without her belittling him. I was like, I'm all aboard for this movie. And they had the nerve. Black Adam had the nerve to use B-list characters of heroes and make them look A-list. Everyone is talking about Pierce Brosnan's iteration of Dr. Fate, Aldris Hodges' Hawkman. Hawkman and Dr. Fate were the good guys! There was no A-level DC heroes in this. This was a great movie. I love this movie. It was action-packed. But it did not perform at the box office. Excuse me. I don't know why I put a T at the end of the box office. It did not perform at the box office. Okay? And The Rock is salty. Because he's talking about, yeah, Jabroni, we're going to go down to DC, Warner Brothers. I'm going to look at Walter Hamada, slap his candy, beep. And then if you smell... What Dwayne Johnson is cooking. No, the SmackDown was laid on Dwayne Johnson. And let's get to the tweet, okay? I'll read it. It's in small letters, but good thing I'm farsighted. My passionate friends. I wanted to give you a long-awaited Black Adam update regarding the character's future in the new DC Universe. Rocky, we already know where this is headed. But I'll continue reading. James Gunn and I connected. And Black Adam will not be in their first chapter of storytelling. However, DC and Seven Bucks have agreed to continue exploring the most valuable ways Black Adam can be utilized in future DC multiverse chapters. That is good news. That is good news. James and I have known each other for years and have always rooted for each other to succeed. It's no different now, and I will, I will always root for DC and Marvel, Marvel's in parentheses, to win and win big in capital letters. You guys know me, and I have very thick skin, and you can always count on me to be direct with my words. These decisions made by James and DC leadership represent their vision of DCU through their creative lens. After 15 years of relentless hard work to finally make Black Adam, I'm very proud of the film we delivered for fans worldwide. I really liked that movie. I will always look back on the fan reaction to Black Adam with tremendous gratitude, humility, and love. We did great. I think they did too. To my very passionate and vocal Black Adam slash superhero genre fans, I love you, thank you, and I will always listen to you and do my best to deliver and entertain you. What a hell of a month. Now we all need some Terramana. I'm not sure what that is. T-E-R-E-M-A-N-A. -E -E. 
Have a productive week and happy holidays to you and your families, DJ Dwayne Johnson. All right, so I was wrong. That tweet was not salty. But I still think he's kind of salty because I thought, I think he felt like all his puffery was going to make him like kind of the the trophy piece of the, D, the new DCU. So if he and James, if this conversation actually took place and James Gunn said, I would like to reconnect with you for future multiverse chapters, just not the first one, I think that's good news. I do. And back to Black Adam, all right? Because Henry Cavill, and I'm, I'm tying Henry Cavill into this too. Henry Cavill's getting some undue, I don't want to call it hate, but he's getting some undue criticism for Black Adam not performing. Like, that, that just blows my mind. How is Henry Cavill getting blowback from Black Adam not performing? Do these people really think that a man that is not advertised for the movie on the, car, on the commercials, in the trailers, Henry Cavill is not advertised. Henry made a statement on Instagram. Rocky made statements on Instagram. Not on television. The Great Experience by John Bat 426 reviewed several trailers. Henry Cavill's not in either one of them or mentioned. So the only people that really knew were people that follow Henry Cavill on Instagram. So if you really, and let's, let's be honest, Black Adam is not a household name. I'm pretty sure my mom doesn't know who Black Adam is. I saw Black Adam with my mom. She enjoyed the movie. My dad does not know who Black Adam is. He's not a household name. He's a B-list character with tremendous power. People ain't running to the theaters to watch a movie about some guy called Black Adam. The general audience is not going to be enthralled by this movie. And then there's no advertisement for Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman or Aquaman. Why would the average moviegoer see this movie? And it's like, well, they didn't come out and support Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill was in the movie for less than 10 seconds. Less than 10. I'm sorry, I'm raising my voice. So you're saying it tanked because people didn't want to see Henry Cavill as Superman. No, they didn't want to see a cameo. They didn't just want to see his face. They wanted to see a movie about Superman. I'm still yelling. I'm sorry. But I just get tired when people like spin these narratives as, as if it's like the gospel truth. Well, Black Adam didn't perform, so nobody wanted to see Henry Cavill Superman. How, wh what, what are you doing? What are you doing? B-list Black Adam without an advertisement for Superman? No, that doesn't work. No. And nobody's going to pay money to see a cameo. Really? Even though a lot of us did pay money to see Mark Hamill in The Force Awakens. And all we got was more of his back than his face. And we got a wide shot of him on a cliff facing Rey. And they're just frozen in time. With her holding her lightsaber. His lightsaber. And he's like... And then the camera pans. So unfortunately, yes, we did pay for a cameo. We didn't know that. Because Mark Hamill was advertised in the movie. Superman's Henry Cavill, I mean, sorry, Henry Cavill's Superman was not advertised for this movie by the trailers. So, back to The Rock. I hope this isn't more cap because The Rock does have the gift of gab. He's one of the best mic men in the history of professional wrestling or one of the best promo guys for all of you that are not familiar with professional wrestling. When a wrestler does an interview, Maybe in the ring or in a backstage segment, it's called a promo, okay? This sounds like good news. I hope this isn't cap. Now let's go to James Gunn's tweets. It's a series of tweets. One of the things Peter and I were aware of when we took the job as heads of DC Studios was a certain minority of people online that could be, well, uproarious and unkind, to say the least. Hmm. Next tweet. Our choices for the DCU are based upon what we believe is best for the story and best for the DC characters who have been around for nearly 85 years. Perhaps these choices are great, perhaps not, but they are made with sincere hearts and integrity and always with the story in mind. 
No one loves to be harassed or called names, but to be frank, we've been through significantly worse. Disrespectful outcry will never ever affect our actions. We were aware that there would be a period of turbulence when we took this gig and we knew we would sometimes have to make difficult and not so obvious choices, especially in the wake of the fractious nature of what came before us. But this means little to us in comparison to our jobs as artists and custodians and helping to create a wide and wonderful future for DC. So it's like, yeah, we know it's going to be tough and people are going to say stuff. There's going to be outcry. There's going to be backlash. There's going to be push, pushback because of the choices that we would make that weren't really supportive of the obvious choices. But whatever. That's basically what he's saying. Whatever. All right. And a lot of people believe that this is aimed towards the Snyderverse fans in particular. Now, I was a Snyderverse fan, even though I do believe objectively the Snyderverse is hit and miss. OK. And to me. The Snyderverse really just feels like an Elseworlds tale. Maybe that's why I was so intrigued by it. It's like, Batman doesn't really do this. Superman doesn't really do that. It's like, hmm. And see, the reason why James Gunn has to clean house, even with Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, is because a, I think one of the, the fine nuggets of Dawn of Justice, Batman vs Superman, is the photo. There's a photo of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman standing next to Chris Pine and the other people, I don't remember their names, I apologize, who were uh, instrumental in that No Man's Land sequence in a World War I, which is the time period in which the first Wonder Woman movie takes place. And so that photo is revisited in the movie Wonder Woman. So in order to purge DC of the Snyderverse, unfortunately Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman is sort of steeped in something that was instrumental to Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. For the record, Wonder Woman was the best part of that movie. There, I said it. I like the way she was treated in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice better than Wonder Woman 1984. That's me. So, as you can see, the fact that you're going to insult somebody that's writing movies for your pleasure, because he's writing about the characters you allegedly love in Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Cyborg, Martian Manhunter, The Flash, Hawk Girl, Hawk Woman, Dr. Fate. The people you guys claim to love is who they have been set up to write new futures for. And here's something that I really appreciate. This is James Gunn responding to The Rock's tweet from earlier. So I wasn't sure, remember I said, if that conversation took place, you know, because wrestlers can cat, okay? This is from James Gunn, love The Rock. And I'm always excited to see what he and Seven Bucks do next. Can't wait to collaborate soon. And on James Gunn's Twitter, he's retweeted what The Rock said that we went over earlier in this video. Great sign. But I'm pretty sure that James Gunn and Peter Safran will have to explain to The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, that we love the Justice Society, they're not Snyderverse, but we we have to make sure that it diverts away from Henry Cavill's Superman, unfortunately, uh, Ezra Miller's Flash, because there's a sequence when, in Black Adam, when The Rock is sort of going through no, no, no. He's having a fight with Hawkman. And they're destroying posters of the Justice League. There was Henry Cavill's Superman, Ben Affleck's Batman, I believe, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, and Jason Momoa's Aquaman. So I'm sure that James will tell The Rock that we delicately have to divert from that and purge Black Adam from all of that stuff. But this is good news. I can't wait for their collaborations either. Because like I said... The Black Adam was so action-packed. I, I really appreciated it. Another thing that I appreciated that I already spoke about in my Black Adam review is the fact that he's hovering the whole movie, seems like. If I could fly, my legs would probably look like trash because I barely use them. I'd be flying everywhere or just levitating. But again, great tweet. I'm gr it's great that James Gunn and The Rock seem to be on the same page with this. This is making me a little more excited about the DCU under James Gunn and Peter Safran. I was disheartened by the way Peter Cavill was treated, but 
in James Gunn's and Peter Safran's defense, they did not tell Henry to make that announcement. The previous administration did. And then James Gunn and Peter Safran were hired. And I know they want to work with Henry Cavill. I know they want to work with Ben Affleck. I know they want to work with Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot. Probably not Ray Fisher because he's acting like such a jerk here. Ezra Miller, definitely not. Okay? Just because of... Ezra, what were you thinking, you? But this has been a great experience by John Bat 426 So glad you guys came and sat through this sort of a longer video discussing today's tweets, today's news. I uh, hope you guys come back again for our future videos. Uh, there'll be more stuff up this, leak, this week. Later this week, I grade Marvel's Phase 4, a very tumultuous phase post-COVID. You know what I mean? And very excited about that video. Uh, David Brent, could you please tell them where to put their comments? Oh, comments go below? Well said, sir. And again, if you like these videos, please hit the like button. Share these videos with other people that you think appreciate comic book related stuff. And The Great Expanse will expand. It's in the name.